Hello, welcome to this quick tour of the AperioCast software. My name is Misa Moyet, and I'm a member of Unicon's Identity and Access Management team. For this presentation, I will be using the official CAS documentation and guides to introduce you to the software and its functionalities. Please bookmark the links on the screen and use them at your discretion. These links provide the most recent knowledge base for CAS. CAS essentially is enterprise a single sign-on. Its, its objective is to allow you to authenticate once and not have the user uh, be challenged for credentials again, provided your applications and your services are integrated with the software to take advantage of the single sign-on approach. It really is composed of two main components. One is the, uh, is, is the service software that is in Java that is very much uh, relying upon the Spring Framework family of technologies. At its heart, it's very much a Spring Boot, Spring Webflow, Spring Cloud type of application. The server is that you would deploy and you would connect it to your authentication account source and, and so on and so forth. And then once you have the deployment up and going, then uh, you can take advantage of uh, any number of client libraries, frameworks, and plugins and so on for your own applications that allow you to speak to the single sign-on server that is CAS and uh, take advantage of, of various features that it offers. So the, the key thing here to remember is that CAS really wants to be your authentication source. It wants to take over the authentication experience for the user and once you end up deploying it, as I have deployed CAS on this Heroku instance, this would be the typical login screen that you would see. You know, typically in this scenario, the user is prompted to provide their own username and password, but in reality, there are many, many other forms and channels where credentials in general can be accepted by, by CAS, and we will sort of briefly attempt to uh, review those. In the most recent releases of the CAS software, vis-a-vis -vis CAS 5 and so on, there, there have been a lot of improvements to the UI in ways that you can monitor and gain insight into the running CAS software. You're provided with abilities to administratively control the various features of the software dynamically on the UI or even understand what's going on underneath. And so if you attempt to sort of get into the CAS dashboard here, again, CAS server being a Spring Boot application, you'll find a lot of functionality, endpoints, and, and so on and so forth that are very much provided by Spring Boot that, for instance, you can take advantage of the running metrics and understand how the software is doing, look at the environment, get a threat dump. On top of these things, you can sort of take advantage of some very CAS specific dashboard type functionality that allow you to look at authentication events, look at the current collection of single sign-on sessions that, that have been established, look at the statistics, and figure out what attributes are being retrieved by CAS and so on. So a lot of insight uh, is provided by CAS directly as part of this dashboard. Another thing that you may be able to take advantage of is that once you have the server up and going and you have your, you know, your own suite of applications integrated with some sort of CAS client or library that, that talk to the single sign-on server, these applications need to be registered and managed and authorized by CAS. And you as the application owner or the CAS maintainer really are in charge of making that effort possible. So CAS also provides a service management or application management dashboard where you can go in, add or remove applications, and essentially authorize and register your own web applications and so on with the CAS software and make that integration possible. Each application, certainly a registration record, has a lot of different features associated with it where you can go in and say, what is my attribute release policy? You know, what is its name, its description, in the case of multi-factor authentication, which I will briefly cover, what things can be enabled or disabled. Or in more advanced cases, you know, register other types of applications that don't natively understand the CAS protocol, but they understand alternatives such as OpenID Connect, SAML 2, and so on and so forth. So this is also is a very handy tool so that you don't quite have to learn the internals of how a given application may be registered with CAS to some degree, but you know, at a high level, you're presented with this GUI that you can register applications. In. More in terms of GUI functionality in the CAS 5 release, and again, being 
very much a spring boot, spring cloud type applications. You can also take advantage of Zipkin with Gaz. Zipkin is an open source technology that provides distributed tracing so that you can sort of understand how requests are processed by CAS in particular and how long each request is taking and where that request travels inward and outward from CAS and beyond. And so this allows you to sort of understand where the bottlenecks are and what requests are taking the longest and what is, what is getting hit all the time and so on. And again, more in the spirit of monitoring and administrative control, this should further allow you to understand exactly your, your state of and, and your health of your current CAS deployment. Finally, there is also a very much administrative dashboard that is provided by the Spring Boot administration server, where it very much mimics the built-in offered functionality by CAS itself, but this is a separate web application where you can dynamically monitor the state of the software. As you can see, CAS is registered with this administration server. You can take advantage of the running threads or look at the environment get a heat dump or look at the metrics and understand how operations are getting executed with the CAS software. And this is all very new and very exciting in the most recent release of the CAS software that is CAS 5, and it will continue to improve and get better over time. Moving on to other types of functionality that you can take advantage of with CAS, one of the most common things that you would do after you've deployed the software is that you want to connect it to an authentication source. This is, or multiple authentication sources. This is where your user accounts are, and this would then allow CAS to connect back to that store and attempt to verify credentials in a whatever way they are presented by the user. So there are a vast number of authentication methods, if you, if you like, that you can take advantage of and connect CAS to your LDAP friendly directories, your databases, and various, various other modes of authentication, and just as well, you can always write your own and have it, if you find something that's not directly supported by CAS out of the box, then that would be something you can easily register and configure with CAS to use your own special account for. In more advanced cases, um, sometimes it's not enough to have CAS connect to the account store, but you'd really want it to act as a proxy, delegating authentication to some other external identity provider. And this could be Facebook, Twitter, a SAML2 identity provider, another CAS server, or even advanced cases, even ADFS. And CAS certainly can allow you to act in that mode as well with the delegation sort of use cases. And this is, again, a situation where you want your user base to log in with Facebook or LinkedIn or Dropbox or alternatively ADFS and so on. So the proxy scenario is certainly, in addition to the usual authentication methods and sequences, uh, certainly is something that is provided by CAS and you can take advantage of. Moving on to, again, talking about more advanced cases in CAS 5, one of the perhaps most sought after features of CAS 5 is the ability to enable multi-factor authentication. And so by default, the CAS 5 release supports the following multi-factor providers if you like, that are listed on the screen. You do a security, Google Authenticator, Authy, and YubiKey. These are fairly common scenarios that you can, you can integrate as with your subscription to the provider. And there are a large number of options available at your disposal that you can, once you've integrated with the provider, you can allow CAS to trigger authentication on the certain use cases. You know, a typical example is all requests to this particular application are required to go through multi-factor or all users who carry this particular special attribute are required to go through multi-factor and so on and so forth. And this is something that you can very easily achieve with the CAS software using any of the listed providers and the triggers that you see here. And even on even more advanced cases, you can optionally bypass multi-factor authentication selectively and conditionally based on your own use cases and your own rules. So I, I invite you to sort of take a, take a look at this, this guide and see, see the options that you have at your disposal. The last thing that I would like to sort of cover with you in terms of new capabilities in the CAS software and the CAS 5 release is the idea that CAS really has become more of a multilingual platform rather than just a software that speaks the CAS protocol. 
today the cast software is able to speak and, and understand a very large popular sort of collection of groups authentication protocols that would be the CAS protocol itself, but you can certainly have it, ca have it act as a SAML2 identity provider, an OAuth2 identity provider, an OpenID or OpenID Connect identity provider, as well as an ADFS to sort of um, WSFED, passive profile type, type identity provider. And these are protocols that you can sort of certainly activate in CAS all at the same time. In, in, in conjunction with everything else, you can have it both be an identity provider and a proxy, and you can have it be an identity provider in multiple flavors of various authentication protocols that exist, that exist out there. In the case of SAML2 specifically, is something that is very popular in most CAS deployments. Uh, you, know, you have the ability to certainly register your SAML2 service providers with the CAS software exchange metadata or even have CAS consume metadata from, from aggregates and federations, which is in common and so on. But more importantly, let's see if this link here allows me to go to get there, excellent. Um, there are a number of sort of predefined built-in service providers integrated with CAS by default. And these are services that are popular in the CAS community, be it higher education or otherwise, that there are known recipes out there documented by the application vendor that, that describe what one may do to integrate the service provider with a SAML2 identity provider. And so the idea is that these Recipes are automated by the CAS software and are provided to you so that you can take advantage of them directly and not have to so, so much worry about the, the intricate details of what that integration may be like. Although, you know, one thing to point out is that obviously the, the guidelines and in the integration strategies are owned and dictated by the application vendor and they may change at any time without prior notice. So you're you know, you're encouraged to test and, and make sure that the integration is, is entirely solid and functional. So that's all I have in terms of new capabilities in the CAS 5. I guess the last thing that I would like to add is, this is also a new addition to the software's capabilities, is the idea of password management. And so in the past, certainly CAS was able to detect account password statuses and policies, but in CAS 5, there is also now the ability for one to sort of update and manage their own password or credential directly, just in time, built into the software without having, without having to go to some other external application to maintain and sort of self-service the password. And so you can, you know, optionally turn on this module and allow your users whose account is about to expire or has already expired and their password has become invalid to directly inside the CAS software in a very seamless transition, update the password and answer security questions if you've set them up and sort of go through that process, receive a one-time token and all of that good stuff and complete their authentication scenario before getting into the application to sort of ease that user experience altogether. So I invite you to take a look and see if there's anything here that would attract your eye and that would be, that would be useful for you. So that's really as far as what I, what I wanted to cover with you in terms of the CAS5 functionality here. Again, uh, if at any time you have any questions about the, the internal workings of the software or if you need assistance to learn better the ways of CAS, there are a number of community provided mailing lists and chat rooms and conferences and so on that you can attend. And of course, if none of that really turns out to be you know, viable, given your timeline and your use cases, you can sort of reach out to Unicon and learn more about our services and our offerings as far as CAS goes and see if we can help you in any way. Unicon provides IT consulting services and support for open source identity and access management applications, including CAS, Grouper, Midpoint, Shibboleth, and Simple SAML PHP. Our services for IEM include assessment, deployment, installation and configuration, integration, user experience, and technical support. To learn more about our services and support for CAS, please visit the link on the slide. Feel free to contact me directly with any questions you have on the new features in CAS 5.